Hey guys, welcome back to your channel. Since you all enjoyed our recent videos on Seattle and Vancouver, we're traveling down the west coast yet again to complete the Pacific Northwest trifecta and checking out the past, present, and future of rapid transit in Portland, Oregon. Portland is the largest and most populous city in the state of Oregon, and with around 3 million residents in the Portland metropolitan area, the region needs a great transit system to transport its residents safely to every corner of the area. Let's get started! Before we get into the video, we wanted to give a quick shout out to our newest patrons Raymond and Gregory. Thanks so much for your support! Supporting us on Patreon is the best way to help us keep bringing new content to you guys frequently, and you'll also be able to access our exclusive community Discord server for a direct channel of communications to us. You can also support us by giving a one-time donation, which you can do through our coffee page. And furthermore, we wanted to quickly remind everyone to practice social distancing in this difficult time, please stay home and keep yourself and your community safe. Alright, time to get back to the main content of the day. We'll first take a look at the intercity rail services available here in Portland. Amtrak provides somewhat limited service to the city's Union Station, an intermodal transit hub in the Old Town Chinatown area of the city, on the west bank of the Willamette River. Three Amtrak lines pass through the city. Cascades, which runs from Vancouver, British Columbia down to Eugene, Oregon. Coast Starlight, which runs from Seattle down to Los Angeles, as well as the Empire Builder, which runs from Portland over to Chicago. These services may not be the most frequent, but there is also a well-connected intercity bus network, offering services to nearby cities in the region. The public transit here in the Portland metropolitan area is managed by TriMet. Short for Tri-County Metropolitan Transportation District of Oregon, the agency was formed in 1969 to replace existing bus companies in the region, and has since grown to have 85 bus lines, 5 light rail lines, and 1 commuter rail line. The different systems serve more than 300,000 riders daily, and although ridership growth has slowed down in the recent years, there's still lots of extensions planned for the systems that will connect more and more people within the region. We'll start by looking at the current lines in the system. First up is West Commuter Rail. Short for Westside Express Service, this is the lone commuter rail service in the region, serving a north-south corridor parallel to Oregon Highway 217 and Interstate 5. The line has five stations along its 14.7 mile or 23.7 kilometer route, with termini located in Beaverton and Wilsonville, and it receives a very modest number of riders at around 1,600 daily. Riders are able to transfer onto Portland's light rail system at Beaverton, while bus routes and parking facilities are available at other stations. Speaking of light rail, it's finally time to talk about the highlight of rapid transit here in Portland, the MAX light rail system. First opened in 1986, the system started from one single line and has now developed into five whole lines of light rail service, with around 95 stations in total and 59.7 miles or 96.1 kilometers of trackage, serving more than 120,000 riders per day. Many of the lines do overlap in the center of the city, especially near Pioneer Square, the center of the system, as well as the Portland Transit Mall, a transit priority corridor that serves light rail and buses. The first line in the system to be built was the Blue Line, a 33 mile or 53 kilometer long line that cuts across the region horizontally. This line is definitely one of the main services of the system, with its 49 stations serving more than 55,000 riders daily, as well as connecting nearby cities and neighborhoods of Hillsborough, Beaverton, and Gresham, with a transfer point at Beaverton Transit Center to the West Commuter Rail Line. The next line that started service is the Red Line, which shares a lot of its tracks with the Blue Line. Although diverting north at Gateway Transit Center to travel to Portland International Airport in an odd single-track looping route, Opened in 2001, this route has 26 stations, with 5.5 miles or 8.9 kilometers of extra trackage for the airport segment, and serves around 22,500 passengers daily. Next up with the Yellow Line, which runs down the middle of the city through the transit mall. Opened in 2004, this line has 14 stations, and serves about 13,000 passengers daily, connecting Portland State University through downtown to the Expo Center. The next line we'll look at shares trackage with the yellow line, the red line, and the blue line. The green line is shaped like a U, and it diverts from the red and blue line trackage to head south, terminating at Clackamas Town Center. The line has 30 stations over 15 miles or 24.1 kilometers of track, and serves more than 20,000 riders daily. 
And finally, we have the orange line. This line extends further south from where the yellow line terminates, lengthening service from downtown Portland to the city of Milwaukee. This is the newest line in the system opening in 2015, with 7.5 miles and 11.7 kilometers of track and 17 stations serving around 12,000 riders daily. The Orange Line also shares a major transit only bridge called the Tillicum Crossing with the Portland Streetcar in a very interesting service pattern. Alright, so these are the current rail rapid transit services owned and operated by TriMet in the Portland area. We'll now move on to taking a look at the future extensions these systems are getting, so you guys will be able to get an idea of what's to come in the near future. First up, we'll take a look at a possible extension of the West Commuter Rail Line down to Salem. There's been a few proposals to extend the service along existing PNW tracks down to Salem in order to help with congestion around the I 5, but due to the low ridership of the line, None of these proposals were able to be passed and actually put on the roadmap. Salem is the state capital and the second largest city in Oregon, and this extension will no doubt help increase ridership of this line and help spur transit oriented development along the route. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be happening anytime soon, despite the persistent lobbying from Rep. Mitch Greenlick. Hats off to you, Mr. Greenlick. Next up, we'll move on to looking at the future of the MAX system. Although none of the extensions we'll be talking about are currently under the construction, a few of them are already underway and being designed and studied, with the rest of them on the table as proposals. As the MAX system is used quite extensively, the case for expansion of the system is strong, and we look forward to seeing all of these implemented in the future in some form or another. The first expansion project we'll look at is the Red Line Improvement Project. This project will extend the Red Line along the current Blue Line trackage all the way west to Hillsboro. So, that a fast rail link can be created between the airports in the two cities. Existing parts of the route on the Portland Airport branch that are currently single tracked are also getting a second track to help with more ridership growth. And TriMet is planning to purchase up to eight more light rail vehicles to accommodate that along with increased frequency. The project is currently in the preliminary design stage, and the expected completion date is 2023 to 2024. Next up, we have the Southwest Corridor Project, an extension to the Green Line. This 12 mile or 19 kilometer extension will bring the Green Line from its western terminus southwest to connect with West at Tigar Station, and then turning to terminate at Bridgeport Village, with 12 new stations added to the route. Although there is still a shortfall in the budget, a new budget measure will be voted on this year to cover that gap, and if approved, the extension could open as early as 2027. The next project currently in the works is the Downtown Tunnel Project. This project aims to convert the current a g r e e corridor between Goose Hollow and Lloyd Center into a tunnel in order to facilitate a grid separated fast rail connection to downtown, as well as to provide a much better solution to cross the Willamette River than the current 100 year old steel bridge. The exact routing of the project has not been determined, but it will be around 3.5 miles or 5.6 kilometers long, and it will cost around $4 billion. Currently, the project is still at the feasibility study stage, but we think this is a really important project for the city as it will cut down travel times, improve ridership, and bring more possibilities of growth to the system, as well as giving trains more options to get through the congested core of the city where trains currently hum along at a charming pace. There's also quite a few other extensions that have been proposed, but these have not been put on the schedule to be developed just yet, when we're not sure if there'll be light rail or some other form of transit such as bus rapid transit. Nonetheless, these will be valuable additions to the system, and we hope to see them sometime in the future. These other extensions will connect Forest Grove, Oregon City, Bridgeport Village, Hillsboro, and Vancouver, Washington to the system. Alright, so this is what the future of the TriMet Rail Rapid Transit systems will look like. Lots of improved connectivity in the works right now, with even more potentially coming in the future. This second part of this video will focus on more local rail transit within the city of Portland itself. Namely, the Portland Streetcar. Owned by the city of Portland and managed by TriMet, the streetcar system serves the city center as a more local and lighter alternative to MAX. There are three different routes in the system, namely the A Loop, B Loop, and the North South Line, and they have served the areas surrounding downtown Portland since 2001. The Portland Streetcar is by far the largest new streetcar system in the US. That being said, though, the system does pale in comparison compared to our favorite streetcar system. The two loop lines combine to form a circle line, with the E loop traveling clockwise and the B loop traveling counterclockwise, 
surrounding the urban core of Portland and connecting the neighborhoods of Pearl District, South Waterfront, and Lloyd District. This service is roughly 4.4 miles or 7.1 kilometers long, serving 52 stations along the way, and around 3,500 riders daily for each direction. The other line is the North South Line, which travels along the western border of the loop service. Heading a bit further to Northwest 23rd and Marshall, as well as Southwest Lowell and Bond at either end, with 39 stations on the route over 4 miles or 6.4 kilometers of track, the line serves around 9,000 riders daily, with the numbers slowly rising. And finally, one last bit of rapid transit in Portland is the aerial tram. One of only two commuter aerial trams in the whole country, this cute little aerial tram service connects the Oregon Health and Science University campus with the South Waterfront, where riders can connect with the North South Line of the streetcar to their final destinations. Opened in 2006, the service receives nearly 10,000 riders every weekday, and a ride would take about three minutes over 3,300 feet or one kilometer of horizontal distance. In 500 feet or 152 meters of vertical distance, a very similar connection is proposed in Vancouver, British Columbia, for Simon Fraser University. We will now take a look at the extensions coming to the streetcar system as our final topic in this video. These are more for the longer term, and nothing is written in stone yet. But it's still exciting to see what could be coming to the streetcar system in the future. The first project in the works right now is the Lake Oswego project. This project has been considered since 2004, and will have extended the streetcar south by six miles or 10 kilometers. But unfortunately, the city officials in Lake Oswego ended up changing their mind about this extension, and the project was officially shelved in 2012. The project would have had 10 or 11 stations, and would have terminated near a shopping center at North State Street and North Shore Boulevard. Hopefully, with some more time, the city will change its mind and will see the extension officially happening. Next up, we have an extension to Montgomery Park in Northwest Industrial District, west of the northern terminus on the River Shore. Currently, two different alignments have been proposed, and the Federal Transit Administration has recently approved a one million dollar fund to continue studies into the extension. And finally, the last possible project in the works is the Hollywood District project. This project will extend the streetcar system into the Hollywood District in Northeast Portland, just east of where the system currently reaches at the North End. This probably won't materialize for a while, but it will be a worthwhile addition to the system, extending service to a busy neighborhood of the city. All right, guys. So this is what the future of rail rapid transit in Portland looks like. Portland's current systems are already quite good in serving different parts of the city. And we can't wait to see where it will be able to reach in the future. With perhaps even more commuter rail possibilities as well. Like, subscribe, and comment down below to tell us what you're most excited for in Portland's transit future. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and support us on Patreon and Coffee if you would like to help us keep making great videos for you guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.